Here we go. Let's see if this will work now. Good morning, everybody. I do apologize for the delay there in getting everything running on online. I do apologize. Good morning. Cheers. I hope you had a wonderful holiday season. Happy New Year, almost sort of, kind of. Uh, I'm here at home right now. I'm waiting for the car pimp to turn up. Um, and if you don't know what a car pimp is, you're obviously not a motoring journalist. Car pimp is the unofficial term that we use, uh, some of us, some of us, I say some of us, um, because not everybody does it, to refer to the people who bring you press cars to borrow for a week. And there is a press car arriving right now, well, not right now, because otherwise I wouldn't be talking to you, but there's a press car on the way uh, that we're gonna be driving for the next six days or so. And uh, it's from a car company that I've been really mean about in the last couple of weeks. And yet they are still sending me a car. And it's really nice and really refreshing because a couple of car companies, <laughs> most car companies now, have started behaving like Tesla. And what happens if you say something that's not particularly nice about the car company, they don't give you a car. And it makes it very difficult to be completely honest and, and unbiased about a review because if they don't give you a car in the first place then you don't get access to a car it's not a kia um i have been trying to get on the press list with the car fleet organizer that does the hyundai the kia and the mitsubishi fleet for more than a year i sent them an email again yesterday going hey I've been waiting for a year. I still haven't heard from back from you what's going on. It is a Nissan Leaf, but it's not the 2019 Nissan Leaf. It is, in fact, the 2018 Nissan Leaf, so the 40 kilowatt hour version. And based on the recent story that we heard breaking yesterday um, for uh, potentially a change to rapid gate, I'm kind of excited to get behind the wheel. So I'm going to be driving that for a week. I'm waiting for it to turn up. It should be here by now. It hasn't arrived yet. So if it doesn't arrive by noon, I will reach out to the folks at the press car company and go, hey, where's the car? Because I can't go to the office, obviously, if there's a car going to be delivered to the house. Um, well, this is the question, with or without the new software. Now, fingers crossed, this is one with the new software. I was watching a video earlier on to figure out how to get that information from the car. So hopefully, I will find out shortly whether that is the new software. And if it is the new software, then I plan on a trip maybe out to the coast. Um, I'd love to go up to Mount Hood in it, but obviously I don't have winter tires for that car. and I don't have chains for that car. I have winter tires on my Nissan Leaf and my Chevrolet Bolt EV, which have the same wheel size as the new Nissan Leaf, but I don't really want to, um, that would not be cool for me to do that. Um, so unfortunately it's not a Tesla. Um, Tesla don't give, press cars out very easily. You basically have to go to Silicon Valley to their headquarters to get hold of a press car. And, um, you know, that that's unfortunate. Do a bit more on the Gone story. Very suspicious series of events, says Pete. And I, I have to admit, it's a bit weird to, to see. Um, I am going to be talking to, I'm going to be talking to Nissan at CES 2019. Hopefully they will give me a little bit more information. They don't count on it though, because it's not too uh, likely right now. I've just realized how uh, weird the head behind me looks because she's a work in progress. This is glycerin. Um, so he got out of jail, then they put him back. That was pretty fishy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Faraday Futures. Well, Faraday Future is, is pretty done and, and dusted from, from what I can tell. Uh, it's one of the characters. So um, I've actually got two of my little uh, friends on the table right now. So uh, where is she? She's hiding there. That's Queenie Octavia Christina Deerhart. She's one of my one of my characters. Chimmy Chang is upstairs. Um, and this is a character that I'm currently working on. Her name Her name is Glycerin. This is what I do in my spare time. She is a, a Dutch angel dragon. And uh, she's a work in progress. You can see this 
how they start um, and we go from there. And uh, in fact, Dutch Angel Dragons, when they're finished, look a little bit like that. Not that I'm making, you know, <laughs> any <laughs> kind of adverts for them, but there's my Dutch Angel Dragon hoodie. Uh, no, she doesn't uh, on the question. You're the only person who reported on the Jaguar I-Pace fire. No, I didn't. Uh, the guys in uh, Electrive did as well. So there we go. Uh, no, my wife does not have a fur suit. She is not a fur. So uh, she's just, you know, she's just tolerant. Um, so there we go. Um, plus one on Faraday Post. I'm excited to hear more from Biden at CES. CES is going to be fun, which is one of the reasons why I'm looking at you. Now I'm going to make sure that I've not missed a story on Faraday Future because you're all talking to me as if Faraday Future, something big has happened to Faraday Future. Um Another Volkswagen thing, the new portable thing, which I heard about yesterday. Um, and there is the press car. So, there is now a Nissan Leaf outside my door. So please bear with me. I'm gonna go and get this Nissan Leaf. I Can you come back upstairs, please? Alrighty. So, sorry about that, guys. I am back. I have a nice, shiny Nissan key, which means that the press car has arrived. So, thank you. Uh, there we go. We'll be Tesla be presenting at CES. Um, no, Tesla will not be presenting at CES. Okay, let's go back and see what you guys are saying in the in the uh, chat. Sorry about that. Um, where's the mouse gone? Here we go. So let's go back. Faraday passed. Yes. Turo sponsor you. Cheap Teslas are available in Colorado. Yeah, I spoke. Now, this is a funny thing about Turo. Two years ago, when we moved to the States, I reached out to Turo and said, hey, could you, do you want to work together on doing some videos? This would be great. And they couldn't verify me as being eligible to rent a Tesla or rent any car through their service. Um, they said my auto score was too low. Now, since then, my insurance score, I've never claimed an accident in the United States. So never reported any problems, any accidents. Um, so I've got, no, you know, no, no tickets or anything, no violations, clean license, clean insurance record. Um, and 
I've got a really good credit score. So I don't know why they wouldn't want me to drive, but I mean, that's what it was. Maybe it's because at the time it looked like I only had my license for like a year, despite having been driving, you know, mm. since I was in my twin early twenties. So I don't know where that goes from. Um, lol furry. So, yeah, sorry. I am. I didn't know if you, if you knew that, but yes, I am. Uh, EV in Portugal news, uh, like to know the inside, of the EV charging business. Um, yeah, but we're gonna do, we're actually working on some videos there to come up with that later on this year. Will Tesla be presenting at CES? No. Any news on the NIO? Not really. Uh, it's not coming to the UK at any point. So take the, take the laptop outside with you. I would, but there is a hot spot, blind spot right at the bottom of my stairs. So basically we've got two Wi-Fi networks in the house and that's where they switch over. Because uh, we, we live in a three-story building and the Wi-Fi is everything up on the top floor. We're on the second floor. The garage is a bit ropey. Um... How do you keep cool in that costume? Do you use a fan or some kind of cooling system? I do, it's called an uh, an easy cool down vest. Um, it's basically a vest with uh, that you put on and it's got special phase change cooling packs that are not ice, but they um, release heat energy um, while they change temperature, but they only do it when they are in contact with something that is warmer than they are. It's really cool technology. Uh, so yeah, and, and when I'm just, I mean, the heads, no, you don't bother keeping uh, cool on the heads. I'll show you, if you really want me to show you, I can show you one of my heads later on, but let's stick on track with the EVs and stuff for now. Um, so yeah, we've got a 2018 uh, Nissan Leaf SL Scarlet Ember. Um, it's the same key, obviously, as the regular Nissan Leaf. We're going to be driving this for a week. We're going to be trying it out, and um, this is going to be cool. We're going to be trying out the e-pedal. I have, you know, disclaimer, I have spent about a week with the Nissan Leaf before, maybe just under a week when I was in the UK, but I didn't get to review it because, um, although I did try my, it was while I was in the UK for Fully Charged Live, um, my sister was in the final weeks of life. In fact, she died, I think, probably two weeks, after, a week, week and a half after I got back to the United States. So I really wasn't in a good place earlier this year. And there's actually still some videos that we filmed in the UK that we've not produced yet because they're terrible videos. I was trying to make a good video out of them and they were just terrible. So we'll see where we go from there. So uh, Americans are obsessed with credit scores. They are. Um, we need a battery cooling system here in Australia for the Nissan Leaf. Very true. At least it's not the Chinese credit score system, Pete James. Bollinger is very exciting with both models. Yeah, I'm, I'm wanting to try and go to, to, to see Bollinger at some point. Um, there are a couple of companies now in the Detroit area that I'd like to go and see. Bollinger is one of them. So I'm going to try and make a trip out there this year. Just as a point of reference, a lot of people say, why don't you travel to X, Y, and Z and see a lot more companies and do a lot more things? Um, because, you know, this person does it or this person does it. Generally, those people who road trip to places like in their Teslas or whatever have got a little bit more disposable income than we might have. And so it's easier for them to do it or they might have a job, a day job where it's um, easier for them to take time off or they earn a lot more money. This is the job that I have. The full time job that I have is Transport Evolved. I also run a charity um, involving these things. Um, we go into kids hospitals and do stuff like that. So I'm pretty much, you know, full transport evolved. And when we do a road trip, we have to raise the money for that road trip before we do it. So um, we are going to go to CES in Vegas and um, we are going to be driving. We're going to be leaving next Thursday. So this time next week, we will probably be in Albany at our first rapid charging stop. We're going to be doing a short video there on the Electrify America experience. We'll be talking about that. We're going to be uh, letting Erin drive the Chevrolet Bolt EV for the first time. It will be her first experience behind the wheel of an electric vehicle, which is going to be really exciting because Erin has not driven an EV before. She's ridden in the car a couple of times. You know, we've, we've done 
stuff. Um, but, you know, she has uh, ridden in the car, but she's going to drive it this time. Um, so we'll see. So, um, so that's going to be exciting. Um, we're going to drive, we're going to overnight near Shasta, where we're going to charge up. And then the next day, we're going to drive all the way from Shasta, all the way down to um, Henderson, uh, Nevada, where we're going to be spending a week and a bit in an Airbnb. We're going to be going to CES every day. We've just got the broadcaster information pack. It's called the broadcast information because we are broadcast media. It tells us, you know, all the other where we're going to be and what we're going to do and who we're going to see and all of this stuff. Our schedule for CES is absolutely hammered. Uh, let me give you a bit of a rundown. I'm going to turn to my other screen and I'll tell you what we're looking at. So we have got this year, it seems to be really focused less on electric vehicles and more on autonomous vehicles, self-driving tech. So a lot of our coverage from CES is going to be really heavily focused on autonomous vehicles and autonomous vehicle technology. So um, the first day for CES is going to be Sunday the 6th. And what we're going to do this year, what we're going to try and do is last year we did, we made one video for every day that we were at CES, which was kind of hard. It wasn't very well done. And we struggled, honestly, we struggled to make to every to make everything happen and to cover everything and then to edit it all together at the end. And we're combating that this year by taking a crib of four. So last year, there were three of us. This year, there's going to be four of us. We're taking a computer with us, a big computer, so that we can edit on the go. Obviously, we'll have the laptops, but the laptops don't really pack a punch when it comes to video editing. So we're actually going to take one of our proper studio edit machines with us. Because we're driving rather than flying, we can basically take as much as we can. Uh, we basically are going to fill the car up with tech, and then we're going to just drive down. Um, which will affect the range a little bit because we're going to have a roof box on, we're going to have a, a, a hitch box on. If you watched a video the other day on Transport Evolve Take 2, you'll know that we are in the process of wiring up lights on the hitch box so that we are legal driving down the road as a little side. The Chevrolet Bolt EV has its tail light really low down on the bumper, or the indicators really low down on the bumper. The tail lights are kind of pretty high up. They're by the tailgate or the lift gate. They're actually on the lift gate. But the indicators are low down, which means that when you've got a hitch box on, which is a little box that sits on the what you would consider a towing hitch, but it's not on this car, a little hitch box. And that's going to have some stuff in it. It obscures the turn signals. So technically, you're not really road legal at that point. And I have driven with it in the past in Oregon and Washington, where the cops are kind of like, well, OK, you can still see the turn signals if you're in the right place. But we're driving through California. We know how California Highway Patrol are about such things. So we've actually now fitted turn signal like a trailer hitch wiring system onto the bolt. It took me all of Sunday to fit it because you have to pull out panels and you have to go right into the back and find the wires and you know splice into the into the wiring loop to then bring the wiring out to the tail of the car to the hitch and then obviously we're going to put um i've got some some led trailer lights which are now um i drilled the holes yesterday and mounted them i've just got to solder everything together and then we'll have proper wiring for the bolt ev while we're driving down the road um so when we get to ces We've got a lot of stuff to do. We've got Schaefer, we've got Byton, we've got um, NVIDIA. We're going to go to their press conference. Uh, what else have we got? Bosch, Talk Robotics, Transdev, Ferruccia, Continental, Qualcomm, Toyota, uh, ZF Fredericia, Frederick Schaffen, um, Hyundai, Valeo, Hitachi, um, Varrock, BMW, Audi, Mobileye, uh, Audi again, Audi again, because they've got several different things on um, Nissan. We've got um, iLights, Sigma cells for EVs, which are really kind of exciting. More Audi, uh, more autonomous vehicle AI, uh, Gentex. So we're doing some stuff with AI and, and, and mirrors systems, which are cool. Um, 
we've then got um, some security stuff. We've got some Honda demos with autonomous vehicles. We've got a helmet system for motorbikes, which is like an advanced helmet uh, that helps you stay safe on the road. Um, and that is pretty much at the moment what we're doing. We're going to be filling that out. We've got like some spaces in our schedule. So we're going to be filling that out as we go. Um, and so you can see quite a lot of CES is going to be autonomous tech rather than EV tech, but there will be some EVs there. We know Nissan is bringing something to CES. It's, it's definitely going to be bringing its um, its new Nismo Leaf there. So we'll get to see that. And someone earlier on in the chat, I think it was Pete, said, when did CES become a car thing? Well, CES became a car thing probably about three or four years ago, around the time I started going to CES. CES used to just be a consumer technology show, but when electric vehicles, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, and autonomous vehicle tech started to become more of a, a, a visible part of the automotive world. These car companies started in, in mass, en masse, to start uh, exhibiting at CES. And we have a period where slowly debuts and premieres have shifted from the automotive car shows to CES. So this year, I know, obviously, the New York, uh, sorry, the, the Detroit Auto Show is the following week. But we're not going to that because a lot of the stuff that we want to cover is going to be at this show. Um, and it makes life a little bit easier for us because we get a head, a head start on some of this tech. Um, all right. So that's, that's what we're going to be doing. And rather than do a video every day, covering everything we did, which is what we did last year, and it took a long time for us to get stuff out. We're going to do a roundup video every day. So we're going to go out, we're going to be filming all day. It's quite, it's quite, uh, <laughs> quite a scary thing for everybody who is taking part because it's, it's like an endurance race for seven days. It's a seven day long marathon. The crew will be on their feet for 15 to 16 hours a day. We will be filming upwards of seven or eight different things, sometimes 12, 13 things in a day. Um, lunch breaks are very short on the go. Um, we are in what's called a run and gun setup. Um, if you are into cameras and video, then you'll know that's how it, that's what is referred to as a situation where you literally turn up, you film, and then you go and film something else. So it's not a huge amount of time to set up. We are taking a load of kit with us. We're taking the shoulder rig. We're taking tripods. We're taking lighting setups. We've got a boom mic this year. We've got a, a triple lavalier set up for the, for the, for the presenters, um, which means if Alex joins us again, as he did last year, hi, Alex, I don't know if you're still watching, there are a hundred and something in the chat, so maybe you are, uh, we've now got lav mics for everybody, <laughs> which is good, uh, we've got some new lenses that we're going to try out, um, and so we're going to be shooting in a very different way this year, we're going to be shooting a lot of b-roll during the day, and, and every place we go to, we'll be doing a separate feature video, if we feel that that place is worthy of a feature video. Sometimes we'll turn up and we'll like, there's nothing here. But if there is something special, we'll film that special as a separate segment and it will be a separate video on our channel rather than a really long roundup video. But at the end of every day, what we will do as a preview to those videos is we'll get together, Kate and I will get together and we'll do a single shot, you know, we spliced together with B-roll from the day saying, hey, we, we did this and it will be like a five, maybe 10 minute video saying this is what we saw today this is what was cool and this is what we're going to be producing in terms of videos looking forwards so hopefully that's a slightly better way of doing it and it also means if there's a topic or a video you want to watch you get to watch that video you don't have to watch the entire thing um, and it gives us more videos obviously more content but it makes it easier from an editing point of view as well because we we're producing a small number of videos on the go at the show, which is why we're taking our editing gear. But we're also saving the majority of our edits for when we get home, when we've got proper software, proper studio, et cetera, et cetera. So that's where we're at. Uh, let's read some of these video comments. Uh, any news on the Leaf battery being able to power a home while in the garage? Well, I mean, obviously Nissan is starting this project in Europe now. Um, not in the States yet. 
I mean, it's it's just starting in the States, but it's it's aimed at fleets and then it will come to individuals. And you'll have to have special hardware. You'll have to have a, a Chademo um, leaf to home kit in order for that to happen. It's not been set up yet um, in terms of um, pricing. If you visit Michigan, some EV friends and I would love to meet you guys. Well, we'll let you know if that happens. Probably my fur friends too, to be honest. Well, you know, uh, there we go. Uh, I keep looking to see what the best EV deals are for the end of the year. No, nothing's really standing out last year. There were some really good deals on the Kia Soul EV. Well, one of the reasons is that um, we're not seeing a huge number of new models necessarily coming to market at the start of next year. Um, in terms of what's available and, and what you might see, there might be some deals coming in on the Volt. Obviously, as it's going out of sale, that does give you some, some leg up when it comes to negotiating and finding a good price. The Bold TV, um, you're not going to get a huge amount of discounts on it right now. You might get something on the Ionic. That might be one to look at. Um, uh, and, and maybe the Leaf, based on it not doing so well in certain markets. So there we go. When did, oh, I've already answered that one. Uh, Chevy Volt is end of life. You may be able to find a sweet deal on that. Someone just <laughs> answered the same question. Uh, there we are. Hi from Germany. Hi from uh, from Germany. Fluffy Doggy. Uh, there as well. There was one who's gone and socked over there. There was another one under here and she's gone. And then there's not really a doggy there as well. So, you know, lots of fluffy things in my house. Do you think Rivian will show up? I'm hoping to see them at Detroit or Chicago as I will be putting down money next month, says John. Um, I would love to know what the order process is like there, John. I'm I'm very, I'm very interested to see what that works out at and what it feels like. I would love, honestly, I would love a Rivian. I can't afford one. Um, I would love a Rivian. And um but I don't see them on the list. So let's go to the uh, exhibitor list to give me a second. I don't think they are. I think when I asked them at the LA Auto Show, they said no. Um, let's have a look on the automotive side. No, they're not in here. Nope, they're not in here. All the major OEMs will be there, but some of the smaller companies not. Um, what about a small trailer? Maybe less drag to find a one wheeler. Maybe, I mean, um, what we've got right now works and we're not, what we tend to do is we'll put luggage in the back. So things like clothes will go on the back of the vehicle. All the expensive stuff goes inside the car. And that's how we do it. Hi from Germany in Wolfsburg. Um, or Wolf, uh, Wolfsburg even, hello. Remember TEN often less can be more in the long run. Yes. Hi, Nikki. Why don't, while I don't get to watch every video you make. Oh, hi, Ben. I do try to follow you as much as I can. I just want to say keep up the good work. Thanks, Ben. That's a really sweet thing. And I'm going to give Ben a shout out because those of you who um, do not know who Ben Nelson is, um, you should follow him. He's got a great YouTube channel. Um, it's at uh, three something mpg org. Uh, 300 mpg i think is his website ben if you're watching maybe you can correct me uh, but ben has just purchased an original electric pickup truck so if you're into pickup trucks and you want to see what that's like he's got a ford ranger ev one of the original ford ranger ev pickup trucks with um, an avcon uh, connector on it it's a connect special connector that was really popular back at the time runs on lead acid batteries and the original batteries were replaced with uh, different batteries because the original batteries, I think, were eight volt batteries under the floor of the bed. And the previous owner has replaced those with 12 volt batteries or six volt batteries. I'm not sure which um, and put them on top of the bed of the pickup. And Ben's doing some fantastic videos about it. Ben's super approachable video style. I love it. It's very vloggy in its style. But Ben's got a background in video production. So the production values are great. 
um, the audio is always really clean. Ben had previously worked on a uh, Vectrex electric scooter and built that up with some Nissan Leaf battery packs. Uh, and unfortunately, Ben had a, I hope you don't mind me saying this, Ben, uh, he had an accident last year, actually, I think. Um, and he got hit, um, had really nasty motorbike accident while he was out testing this vehicle, I believe. And so now he's working on the pickup. It's great to see you back, Ben. I'm glad that you're back in full health. So thank you uh, for the compliments. Uh, the, the feeling is mutual. The feeling is mutual. Uh, my grandpa uncle owns a massive chicken farm and refuses to use any pickup truck but a Chevy. Do you think the Tesla pickup will work for him? Honestly, I think um, I would I would wait and see when when Chevy comes out with a pickup. At the moment, I'm really struggling to to recommend people buy uh, a Tesla. And it's not because I don't like Tesla. It's because I'm starting to hear so many issues from people who are having problems with quality control um issues with with um just the vehicles having weird errors so in the last week i've watched a video engineering explained he just got a tesla model three and some of the defects in the paint and the quality control on his car is is, is not great and um he was really kind of you know he like, i like this car um I like what Tesla's doing, and some people will see me, this as me being super um, harsh on Tesla, and other people will see me as being super easy on Tesla. Um, he was really straight down the line about it. So again, great video to watch. You should go watch it after we finish this stream. The, the Tesla pickup, I think, honestly, I think it's going to be priced too highly for your average pickup owner to use. And I think that's the problem with the Rivian as well. And I think maybe that's why um, the Bollinger B1 is such an interesting vehicle, because it seems to be built purely for utility purposes. And that's what we really need. We want a pickup truck. We need a pickup truck that is utilitarian. I don't mean sparse in its interior or sparse in what it offers. I mean utilitarian. I mean a vehicle that you can get in you know, with your mucky boots on and not worry about damaging the interior or, you know, a car that can get beaten up. Because if you look at most pickups, they get, well, <laughs> there are two types of pickups, right? But let's be honest. There are the pickups that are driven to and from work by some guy who dreams of going off road at the weekend, but never does. And then there are the, the, the pickup trucks that are workhorses that are used every single day by people who need a pickup. I've got a friend who's got horses and she needs a pickup because she needs to be able to go and pick up hay and store for her horses. And her pickup truck is used to get her to and from work, but it's also used to get, you know, to do stuff for the horses. Um, and so it's, it's, it's super, I don't yet see a pickup truck that has that setup, you know? Um, so there we are. Um, yeah, so, um, I'm seeing Ben's chat now. I, for some reason, it wasn't scrolling properly. I just picked up a 20 year old factory built Ford Ranger EV truck. That'd be perfect for a farm. Yeah. Um, and 300mpg.org. Uh, there you go. Um, and the, the defects were appalling. Yeah, they were. What concerns me is some of the new EVs, more power is more stupid behavior. Yeah, that's true. Can you speak in an American accent? Do you want me to speak in an American accent? <laughs> um, my, for those of you who know, um, my accent tends to vary depending on who I'm talking to and where I am. Um, so, uh, I don't really have to think about it all that much, but you know, um, I, I, well, no, I mean, this is a thing, right? Because I, I live in America now and my accent tends to wander just a little bit depending on where I am and who I'm talking to. And, uh, it's kind of weird actually, because, um, if I'm talking to someone who is American, then my voice becomes more American and it's not me trying to put it on. I mean, right now I'm kind of consciously going, okay. But um, yeah, I mean, like if I'm talking to someone who, if I, if I just spend all day talking to my wife, by the end of the day, I sound a little bit more American. 
Um, but my, my wife, who is American, is now starting to sound more British. So figures. Um, so there you go. That was bad American for me. I um, don't really like doing that. But <laughs> for those who don't know, I do do voiceover work sometimes. So there you go. I thought you were like 15. <laughs> uh, no, um, I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not. I'm, I'm 40 next year. Anyway, accents rubbing off on one another, lol. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much how it works, you know? Um, and I, I, some people got really upset with me when I did a video, um, I did a crossover a couple of years ago, and I was like, I, I was speaking to that person and my accent kind of drifted and some people got really upset with me really upset with me and like said I was faking it and I was like I wasn't faking it I was just being a vocal chameleon all right um so uh there are some other things I was going to talk to you about road trip so we're road tripping to CES which is going to be crazy uh we are going to go down the I-5 corridor to um uh whatchamacallit uh to uh, Shasta, and then we're going to go a little bit further south to Reading, which is spelt differently to the Reading in England, I think. Um, and when we get to Reading, we've then got to make a choice. We can either go up into the mountains and go over towards Reno, or we can carry on south past Sacramento. Um, and kind of skirt the east side of the, of the Bay Area down I-5. Um, and then we go over the mountains. Uh, we go down to Baker and then up and over the mountains into Las Vegas. Now, interestingly, there are two little sections of this trip that are a bit of a bugger, basically. One of them is uh, that aforementioned section. We're going up to Bakersfield and then over... There's a stretch there that's like 180 miles or something in between rapid charges. And then there's another one that is, um, uh, if we go the other route and we're coming down from Reno down to Las Vegas, there is a section there that is like 200 miles. And there is a casino midway that has a NEMA 1450 socket. So we, we do have a portable charging unit with a 1450 adapter on it. So we may be using that. Um, but we haven't decided which of those two routes um, we should be using. So if you've got any thoughts, let me know below or in that, those comments right there, and I will take that into consideration. There are some, some interesting choices to be made. We may do one one way and one, one the other. We are going to be going through some mountain passes, which is one of the reasons we're taking my car, because we've got winter tires on the car. Um, we could just we could just rent a minivan and take a minivan. But the cost of renting the minivan is pretty high. And it's actually cheaper for us to, to stay overnight somewhere and take a little bit longer to get there than it is the other thing. For Europe, from Europe, what is the I-5 corridor? The I-5 corridor is basically a road that runs north to south on the west coast of the United States. It's not always on the west coast, sometimes it's like 100 miles inland. But it runs from the border with Canada, so it runs from the border with, um, in fact, I think actually I-5 runs, I don't know if it's called the I-5 further north, but it runs from the border with Vancouver, BC, all the way through Seattle, uh, um, sorry, all the way through, all through the way through Washington, past Seattle. In fact, it does go through Seattle, all the way south, past Portland or through parts of Portland, down south, 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 south. Um, and then it goes into California and then it runs all the way through California and it ends up in the border, uh, at the border with Mexico. So um, there you go. Um, somebody said, is something about the 60 kilowatt hour uh, any news on the 60 kilowatt hour Zoe? I have not heard zip about the 60 kilowatt hour Zoe. I 
would love to see one. I think it would be great. Um, will it happen? Probably. Um, Renault is obviously really, really positive on EVs still. Um, how much will it cost? God knows. God knows. Um, so there we go. Um, how many kilowatt hours have the Nissan Leaf? The one I've got sitting outside right now is a 40 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf, unless Nissan have pulled a fast one and have like not told me that they've given me a, a 60 kilowatt hour one, which would be awesome. The badge says SL, so it doesn't say SLE plus. So I'm pretty sure that they haven't given me a new one. If they had, they would have told me. They'd have said, hey, we're giving you a car on, on an embargo. Um, but I've got to give some love to Nissan because I am horrible about Nissan. And I have been horrible about Nissan in the past. They always give me a press car. And in this case, I didn't ask for one. They were like, hey, we want you to drive this and do a video on this. I'm like, okay. Even though I've been mean about this car in the past, sure, let's do it. Um, whereas, as I said earlier on, certain car companies won't give me a car. Um, Jaguar hasn't has pretty much refused to give me a car. Um, they said there was a car locally to me. They, I've been asking them about it for months and months and months. I found out that there was a car locally on one of the press fleets and it was all booked out. And they said, no, we're not going to extend it so you can drive it. And when I asked their head office, they were like, sorry, no. Um, Audi won't give me a car because our channel isn't big enough. 1.5 million views a month is not big enough for them. Go figure. Um, and I'm still waiting for some of these other cars. And I could go to a dealership and do it. But the problem is then sometimes uh, dealerships don't want to play ball. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Um, so, you know, breaking news. Detroit New News named the Tesla Model 3 the car of the year. Nice. Nice job. Nice job. The SL is the base model. Yeah. Um, from Spain, how many cost the Tesla in Russia? I don't know. Looking at the plug share route, long dry spell, would you be filming the drive and your efficiency with a trailer? Well, we're not taking a trailer. We are taking the the little box that's on the back of the car. It's like a box that hangs off the back of the car. It's not a trailer. It doesn't have any wheels on it. Uh, that's what I thought. Nissan SL is the top one. I can never remember if it's SV or SL. I have to look it up call myself a motoring journalist. I always get SV and SL muddled up. It's just as stupid freeway, says Jay the Bachelor. Uh, I-5 is an interstate route. Yeah, like the E66 in Denmark, Germany. Um, I wonder about renting the Chrysler Pacifica hybrid van, not particularly long range on the battery, but it'd be great for a road trip. Yeah, it would be good. They don't have one at my local car place. I did think about that, but um, yeah. Aldi Volkswagen did not want to sell EVs. Is there not an S? There is. Yep, S, S, V, S, L. Thank you, Ben. So we've got the high end one. Have I seen the new numbers from the new carb certifications for the code in Nero? I have not. Want to tell me? That would be good. Um, right. Some weird person is posting weird stuff on the channel. I do apologize. Fast charges in Porsche. Yeah. Um, stupidly high, high, high rate, 450 kilowatts. So after I've had a spot of lunch, I'm going to be going to the studio and then I'm going to be doing a Transport Evolved roundup of the year. And it's going to be a roundup based on what the channel has done. So it's going to be an informal video talking about what we've done, what we've managed to do this year. It's going to be fantastic. And then tomorrow, hopefully, we'll do a roundup of um, our most popular stories of the year. And then we're gonna do a 10 roundup on Saturday. So basically it's roundup shows. And then on Monday, hopefully, it will be a blooper show, which will be fun. I hope, please don't kill me. And then next week we'll be, we'll be driving all the way to uh, Las Vegas, which is going to be crazy. It's going to be absolutely cray cray. Anyway, on that note, guys, I am going to say thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe below. Thank you for watching this. Um, this very crazy, uh, <laughs> very crazy stream. It's been fun. I'm trying to click on this link. Open in, in a new tab. All right. 
So let's have a look at the Kia Soul EV. Oh, thank you. Uh, you've just actually sent me the original documents, which I like. So Kia, Kia Nero Electric, Zev Credit. 369.97 UUDSAER. I don't know. Urban dyn dynamometer driving schedule. So that's urban. That's a city rating. So it's not combined. That's city driving, which I can see as being appropriate for that. Um, but it doesn't mean that you're going to get 370 miles on the motorway. You're going to get nearer to about 325, 350 maybe. Thanks for a great year of vids. Thank you. It's been fun. With regard to not getting a test car, no worries, they're lost. If you tell the truth, maybe you couch it so they can't say no to you lending you, <laughs> you one. Honestly, I, I I like the fact that that this channel, I hope this channel is known for me just speaking my mind. And sometimes I get it wrong. You know, sometimes I get it wrong. Sometimes people call me out about it. And I, I don't mind that. Um, if people say you got it wrong and here's why, that's great. If people just scream and shout, you're wrong. And, you know, as someone said the other day, a load of anti-Semitic stuff on the channel. And I spent the afternoon cleaning up Transport Evolved on Christmas Eve of anti-Semitic comments that some nut job had gone through and left that morning. It was not cool. Um, it was really not cool. And by the way, on that subject, as someone was saying, um, I've had a couple of people recently get really upset with me and said, why aren't you noticing me senpai kind of thing? Um, I'm putting senpai, notice me senpai as a bit of a joke. But um, people do get upset that I'm ignoring them or that I'm not responding to them. Um, and the answer is we get now thousands of comments in a week. Transport Evolved, this time last year, we were, we were, and I'll cover this in the video later today. This time last year, we were getting on average, maybe, um, 400,000 to 500,000 views a month, right? That was our average. We were averaging four to five thousand, uh, four, 400 to 500,000 views a month. On a good month or a bad month, we were averaging 250 to 300,000 views. Now, Transport Evolved is averaging between 850,000 views on a bad month to one and a half million on a good month. And obviously with increased views comes increased comments. And with increased comments comes increased douchebags. And 2018 has been the year where we've transitioned from electric cars being, <coughs> excuse me, have transitioned, electric cars have transitioned from being fun things for a niche market to being a mainstream thing. And that means that the mainstream idiots have come out. The the BMW drivers, no offense to BMW drivers, using a stereotype, the BMW drivers of the EV world are now here. The ones that will shout you down if you don't agree with them, the, the Tesla fanboys or the EV fanboys or the climate cl climate change deniers, whatever you want to call them, there are plenty of different groups who are now b barreling in and piling in on the channel, which is great because more eyeballs mean more money for us. And if I tell you that CES is going to cost us six grand, <laughs> that's how much it's costing Transport Evolved to go to CES this year, $6,000. Um, all the money, all the extra vo uh, views, all the extra ad revenue is what keeps us afloat and keeps us running. But it does mean that I have now personally had to really distance myself for my own sanity from being the person that you talk to directly. And so there have been some people who have been starting to email me privately through private channels. And thank you, Scott. Thank you for the for the, for the donation there. Good job. Um, can our 2019 Christmas present be with you, Robert Llewellyn, except for doing a Top Gear style expedition with challenges, budgets and mayhem will be super good this year, we promise. I'll talk to the guys. I'll talk to the guys. To confirm, I will be at Fully Charged live this year. I can confirm that. I will be bringing the crew. 
again, it's an expensive trip. So if you want to help us, help us. We do all now, so all, we, my, I can't speak. We also now have a Kofi, or Kofi, 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 Kofi. I'm going to say Kofi, 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 Kofi. We now have a Kofi, Kofi. <laughs> so if you want to tip us, any money that you send us for that will be used to buy food for us. It's like tips. It's the equivalent of you buying us a meal to say thanks. So we'll be using that money on the trip. Um, this year, you mean next year, don't you? I do mean Kofefi. Yes, we'll be buying Kofefi on our road trip. Someone's already donated. So thank you to the person who donated um, $15. That was really nice. That's like basically coffee for the whole crew um, on the road, which is great. So thank you. Um, if a video plays during a YouTube video, should we watch the end so you get the watch money from YouTube? I don't know how that works. If it's a short video, yes. If it's a long one, go ahead, skip it. <laughs> I mean, that's probably the way to do it. Um, I am also hoping to be at Fully Charged Live USA. I know a fair bit about the Fully Charged Live USA, but I can't tell you about it yet because it's still under, under wraps. I don't think it's been announced yet. I've got some dates, but I'm not allowed to. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say when, um, until they do, and then we know. Um, we'll go from there. So uh, yeah. So basically, what I was saying was, you know, I've had to distance myself from from. I've had to distance myself um, uh, from trans from the Transport Evolved channel as much as you know this because it. It's lovely that there are so many people who now watch the channel. We've got 70,000 subscribers, which mind, I mean, that blows my mind. 70,000 people watch the stuff that comes out of this thing, which is stupid because the stuff that comes out of this brain is normally, you know, I mean, this comes out of my brain as well. And that and other weird stuff comes out of my brain and you're watching it because you like what stuff comes out of my brain. And thank you, Dump the Pump. By the way, your used Chevy Volt video played a major role in my decision to buy one. So here's a few coffees on me. Thank you. That is perfect. It was great. Fully Charged USA, it was briefly alluded to. I would love to visit the Midwest and Energy Fair in June. That'd be great. We're planning a road trip down to... Uh, we're planning a couple of road trips this year. It, um, it is something we'd like to do. Road trips cost money, especially when I bring my crew. Um, when I'm doing it myself, it's, I don't pay myself. I mean, just so that you guys know, I mean, I'm not getting rich off Transport Evolved. I pay myself. I sat down and worked it out the other day. The amount of money that I end up taking, the amount of money I end up paying myself for Transport Evolved is, um, I'm the, I'm the, the lowest paid member of staff. Um, by quite a long way and we bring in we bring in enough to pay the rent and everything else and all the equipment and and pay Aaron's salary and obviously pay Brandon to the camera guy who's coming to CES and paying for the show and everything like that but um, if you worked out how many hours I do on Transport Evolved I'm paying myself somewhere in the region of five dollars an hour which is under minimum wage <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, but if we are doing a road trip, we basically need to raise money for it. Um, so the more donations people want to send us, the better. And we want to grow. We want to have like the Linus Tech Tips. We want to be like that for 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 EVs and transportation and clean tech moving forwards. And funnily enough, um, I'm really laughing because I saw the Christmas special from Robert and the crew at, at Fully Charged, and I instantly recognised where they were. And it turns out that their studio. I think their offices must be located on a, um, their, their offices are located, I think, I know they're in Bristol, and I think they're located about two miles down the road. Thank you, Ray. Um, they are located about two miles down the road from where I used to live. So it's kind of always makes me smile that we used to be on the doorstep of Fully Charged. And how freaking weird would it have been had I stayed in Bristol and then we'd have had Transport Evolved and Fully Charged like two miles apart. I mean, mind blown, right? That would have been scarily crazy. So maybe there's something about that part of the UK that helps grow EV stuff. Um, I mean, Robert doesn't live like right there, but I mean, he's what? He's like a 45 minute mile, a 45 minute drive. I used, to, I mean, I could, I used to be able to drive from mine to his in my leaf and not charge on the way. So 
you know, that would have been fun. Get a stall at uh, Fully Charged USA and staff it with volunteers who maybe get a free entrance one day and help you the other day. That's a great idea. Simon, you are a bloody genius. Sorry, I mean, I, I think I can say bloody. I think British people can say bloody without it being considered rude, right? Maybe. Or, or maybe one day you could come to a Portugal to see the evolution of EV in our society. That would be great. You're going to order a fully charged Moto Chimp. I would love one. I would love one. I thought that was brilliant. I think that was brilliant. There are some more merch, uh, says Simon. Uh, there are some more merch. Uh, there is some more merch on our store. There's some great, there's some great new T-shirts coming on. Uh, the crew's got some new T-shirts coming for Fully Charged Live. We are actually going to change the way that we do our thing. Thank you, Jarno. Thank you very much. That's lovely. Thank you. I do love it when people send money to me and we're doing a, a, a show like this. It really helps. Maybe I'll do a live stream every week and <laughs> bring in some more money uh, for stuff like this. But um, when we are doing, I've um, uh, forgotten where I was going with this. Oh yeah, well, we're doing the, we've got some new merch that we are going to be wearing at CES and then we'll probably start making that available to members of the public. One of the shirts is already available um, and one of them isn't, I think, and then we're going to make that publicly available shortly after. It's super cool, I can't tell you about it, but we're also going to change the way we do our shows, okay, because some of you guys have commented that the virtual studio isn't good. You don't like the virtual studio, you like me being like half from half of me up. Obviously, my bottom part is not very exciting. Um, <laughs> thank you, Sterling. Um, we'd love to have you interview us for our battery-powered system we'll use for supercharging stations. Our minimum is 65 kilowatts. Uh, email me for details. Tell you what, Sterling, can you ping me at show at transportevolved.com and don't get offended if I don't email you back immediately because CES and holidays and Christmas and everything else. Um, I am taking some time off for Christmas. Um, I have not really done any Transport Evolved stuff for, for two, three days. This is the first day I'm back. My wife is out for the day. She's actually off for the day. She's off to see family. Um, my daughter's around. I'm gonna work from the studio this afternoon for a bit. And I've meant to be working, I'm meant to be working on this over the holidays. I have done no work on this over a month and a half that's how busy I've been and it's driving me absolutely crazy um show at transportevolved.com that is the one yes Sterling you are correct that is correct I'm not going to put that in the chat though because people will you know. I think the virtual studio looks nice could be worse broadcasting from my garage isn't very pretty Maybe we just need some nice backdrops. Yeah, I mean, what we're thinking about doing, what we're thinking about doing is changing the setup. We've got a really beautiful 50 millimeter lens, which is perfect. And we're considering dumping the virtual screen and me going a little bit less formal and, and wearing t-shirts and talking to people like this. Um, I'll probably still keep the makeup and the contact lenses um unless i'm doing a stream like this in which case it's easier for me because uh contact lenses i can't see so clearly with my contacts in but um we are considering switching to a a, a less formal setup for the studio we've already chatted to our clients in new zealand and we are potentially going to do that i like the look of the glasses too the problem is when you've got studio lights and you've also got a teleprompter um, sometimes gets in the way. So, um, yes to backdrops. I much prefer virtual studio to sitting down at your editing station. All right. So maybe, maybe we need to have a poll. Maybe that's what I need to do before the end of the year. I'll do a poll on the channel and I acknowledge that I'm not going to keep everybody happy. Um, but maybe I'll keep the set and maybe change what I'm wearing. I know that the set is different. Get a real studio, says Francis. Yes, I would love to get a new studio. The problem is we're not bringing in enough money for it yet. So um, this is a great talking point. So for us to switch, we're currently paying $850 a month for our studio in downtown Portland. It's not big enough to have a proper set. Um, it's almost there but not quite big enough. And we talked about building a set, but 
adding the set and then adding all the required lighting for that set um, would basically push the camera area even further out and poor Erin has to climb over the camera rig to get into her desk. So, yeah, and if we want to put a 50 millimeter lens on there, which we want to, um, that's even harder for us to do. So we do want to move this year. It's one of our goals to move out of our current studio this year in 2019. We've come to the end of our official lease. We can, I mean, we're just rolling through. Our lease agreement is rolling on now so we can give notice at any point. Um, but we need to raise, like if, if Transport Evolve brought in another $1,500 a month, we could actually move into a proper um, warehouse location with a roller door where we could actually get cars in and properly film the cars, maybe do some workshop videos, which we want to do, as well as all the other stuff we're doing. Um, and we'd like to do from there. Are you allowed to set up and use a small single unit warehouse? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's what we're looking to do. We're looking at a place, we need probably about uh, 1,500 to 2,000 square foot. That's what we need in order to do what we're currently doing. We're, we currently have 550 square feet, or is it 600? 550, 600 square feet. Um, and, that is, um, and that is our challenge, that is our goal. So yeah um set up a work desk we thought about that as well so send us some ideas um i know that a lot of you don't like the, the set that we have and um and we'll see what we can do we'll see what we can set up and how we can do it um and uh we obviously i'm not going to film in my house like this because this is this is a special treat i don't normally broadcast from my house anymore because it's an intrusion into my house um like my daughter bless her she's being great she hasn't been able to come into the kitchen all morning um so you know oh simon thank you very much just up yeah we had someone who was donating a hundred dollars a month who just had to drop off so um our total payment for january is like a hundred dollars less than it was going to be um so anybody who wants to up their payment that would be wonderful thank you very much and by the way the whole patreon thing about someone who was um you know the, the person who got kicked off a of patreon for hate speech um it's it's tough um Yes, free speech is important, but hate speech is, should not be tolerated. And I, I kind of, I, I kind of feel that Patreon did the right thing. If you are, if you are using words that are offensive to other people to that degree, then then you really should be rethinking about how you you're broadcasting, especially if you're making money off being that that person. I mean, I don't think. I mean, yeah, I've I've brought my political views to the show before and I've been harsh about President Trump and 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 other stuff but hate speech is not cool I mean that's why I went through my channel on Christmas Eve and removed as I say oodles of anti-semitic rambling nonsense and I've had to do it before with anti-GLBT stuff anti-trans stuff um I've now got to the point where if someone is starting to post anti-trans stuff on my channel, which is a common thing. It's happening every day. I'm just starting to remove them because I don't like it and it makes me feel terrible. And this year I have suffered um, really bad depression, like super bad depression. The worst depression I've had actually, which is crazy because my, my channel has been doing great. My business is doing great. We're successful. We're making a profit. You know, Transport Evolved has tripled in its size this year, which is crazy. Um, but because of all of the, the the stuff I had to constantly deal with, it's, uh, you know, pe people have been saying, and that's the reason why I've distanced myself. I've had to now implement spam filters on my email because I get hate mail, um, some really disgusting hate mail. And I also get people spam calling the office and saying really weird shit to me, pardon my French. So, you know, that that is why I, I kind of have distanced myself and it's it's been tough um get someone else to handle pr yeah and i was saying this to my wife the other day you know because she was saying well you maybe you should bring someone in to moderate the comments and i was like the comments that we are getting on the channel are some of them are so terrible some of them are personal attacks on myself or personal attacks on kate walton elliott or some other stuff but um some of them are just terrible 
like mentally deranged people who need help. And I don't want to put that onto someone else. So there we go. Um, okay, I can keep at least one of my videos formal. There you go. Um, Twitch, this message is, is, is held. I think asshole apparently is, is, a, is a thing. Uh, thank you, I'll use Nightbot, I'll have a look into that. Uh, don't listen to the dumb racists, listen to your loyal intelligent followers. That's the way to do it. Um, hello. Uh, there's lots of space cadets here, <laughs> lots of space cadets. It tends to happen on a stream anyway. But I've been live now for an hour and five minutes. This car is waiting to be driven. And I've got to go and pick up my cameras so I can actually film a review. So thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for joining me. Do support us through Patreon if you want to go to... Uh, send us some money on Kofi. You can also do that. Let me find the Kofi link and I will put that in the chat. I think it's Kofi.com, transport default. Um, I would love to, but as I said earlier, ooh, as I said earlier, um, I can't do it because of the wireless connection does weird things. So there we go. So if you want to send us a Kofi, use your phone. I may do that later, but I also want to do a proper video at some point. We're going to change up our setup. I would love to go and do some holiday stuff, but I need to go to work. So I'm going to I'm going to put my put my shoes on and head out. And uh, then I'm going to come home early and I'm going to do some knitting. Or maybe I'll do some more with this thing. I've got to. Uh, I've got to do some more darting on this thing. She has, um, I'll probably show you, on the back here, I have to do more darting, which is effectively where you bunch up and, and sew, you cut and sew the fabric to make it follow the contours of what it is that you're working on. So um, this thing was supposed to be finished. She was supposed to be finished um, in November, but I have been so busy with Transport Evolved and everything else that I just haven't had a chance yet. So um, yeah, she needs to be finished. Um, there's probably about another, probably another three or 400 hours of work on, on this thing to go. So we'll see, we'll see when she's gonna be done, but there we go. And she will be going and making kids smile in hospitals at some point, so there you go. Anyway, thanks every, why is it a she? Um, just because the name of this character. Um, actually, it's a really good question because these characters, asked. these characters, Dutch angel dragons are genderless. Um, it's something that the creator was really, really, um, really specific about. She said they, they, they are genderless and um, they're kind of ethereal magical creatures. Um, and so I've come up with a name. Uh, the name for this character is Glycerint. Not Glycerin, Glycerint. And um, and she is, uh, we use she, although it's technically they, um, but I have decided to use she, her for that character. And obviously Queenie behind me is she, her as well. Um, so, and one of my other characters is a guy. Uh, Jimmy Chang of the Fox is a guy. So, drama, drama and acting and all that. It's one of the other things I do for fun. I've tried to finish this stream like three times, so I really am gonna finish it now. Thanks for watching. Support as usual below. Keep evolving.